And in today's episode, we are looking at how to make roads. That's right, we're going to be using these DIY time with Tommy Walsh adhesive vinyl floor tiles to make roads. So, I don't know why, but in games of Gaslands, I almost never see people use roads. There are rules for roads. I mean, it means that you don't take a hazard when changing up or down a gear um, by default. But for whatever reason, people, sometimes they'll make roads, but then not use them. Or they'll have them on the table, but they don't do anything. It's, it's really weird. So I thought, why not make some roads and start preaching the good name that is, you know, roads in Gaslands. Now, I've never actually tried this before. Um, I'm going to be using, because I got these from my local Poundland, or for our American friends, Dollar Tree. I got these floor vinyl floor tiles that have got a uh, self-adhesive backing. I got these because I saw on Facebook, on the Gaslands Facebook group, I can't remember who did it, but someone used tiles like these to make their um, to make strips of roads. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try that. Now, I think, looking at these, because the design is printed on, it's not, you know, the wood grain isn't actually a solid surface. The actual surface is like this wrinkly lizard skin looking texture. Because of that, we could probably texture this side or the uh, sticky plastic side. But the question is how yeah, because that's quite that's quite sticky. So what I might do is instead of texturing that side, I might texture that side. I don't know, because this is my first time. So you boys and girls at home, this isn't really a tutorial. This is more of an experimentation of how to build roads using, well, for a pound or a dollar, you can't really go wrong. So vinyl floor tiles, let's, let's see how this works. Oh, bit. How long are these things? These things are da, 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 12 inches across. Uh, so we could do them in like, Two by two. Well, they're quite. Roads are quite wide, aren't they? They're not narrow things. If I say two inches for a road, then from each one of these, I'd get three 12 inch long segments. One I want to turn into like a roundabout sort of thing. Huh. So we'll do them four inches long for this one. Because as you can see, that's two inches per car. Okay, I can wrap that and that form it perfectly. Yeah, so you got, that is quite a long road just from 30 pence worth of materials. There you go. So then you get your car on there and do your maneuvers. And the thing is, in real life, these things are just designed for driving in a straight line and you stay within your lane. So there is a bit of flexibility there. Using a handy dandy plate. So that's one part of the curve. Because what you've got to think you see is it's coming up like this. It's coming up like that and then it's going to come off here like that. So we only need a little bit. So old mug will do it. Old mugs, we've all got old mugs. Yes, yes. There you go. Scope of my genius knows no bounds. God, this would be so, this would make my life so much easier if I could just cut these with scissors. Oh, you bloody can as well, look at that. Look how flawlessly that cuts. Oh my god! Talk about easy mode, but that is how you do a curve like that, see? Because then your car can come along and do like, scree, and carry on going. So the idea is you'll be able to quickly put these down and make a road system for your games. 
which as you can see is pretty good it's a pretty good size for it and you go oh well, that ain't very good yeah but it's not giving too much of an advantage to either player then it's there and cars can use it but it's not so in your face that you have to be driving on roads so yeah and then if we whip this away we also have plenty of these offcuts which we can use to make different bits of scenery so that's pretty cool so don't don't get rid of any of this stuff because we can use this to make all sorts of bases for things as people have suggested okay so skipping ahead here i decided i'd try and combine my previous techniques for basing and painting by just mixing brown paint pva and sawdust together to try and you know add that surface layer texture yeah it uh, it didn't work so going back to the uh, the new faithful as opposed to the old faithful of pva glue over the top and then using sand as a basing material and, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, this, for a lot of people, this could have been the point where you go, oh, well, this project's not worth it. Time to abandon it. And then all this stuff ends up in a bin. But at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff, a lot of these projects can be rescued. You just need to put the time in. And it's nothing special. It is literally just PVA glue with sand pressed on top. And as I've said before, in a perfect world, this would be nice dry sand, but it's not. It's, it's a bit wet, so it clumps together. But uh, yeah, I mean, the effect looks all right, in my opinion. I mean, there are big lumpy bits where some of the sawdust sort of change the, the height of the surface, but you can paint around those. Okay, so you're going to see a bit of painting gore right now. I want to reassure you all that my white and black paint were, were basically empty at this point. Um, so putting an enormous brush into the pots, it's not as bad as it might look. Um, but the warning's there. So starting off with grey and then using white, not as a dry brush, but just as a, as a rough highlight over the top focusing more on the sides of the road rather than like just in the middle for no reason. I think one of the tricky things is roads in reality are pretty boring. They're just a big grayish black mass of tarmac. There's not much on there. Whereas if you're doing it for tabletop miniature gaming, you want to see a bit more definition. Now something I'm going to do is mask off the sides of this road because over here in the UK we have yellow lines and double yellow lines that run along more of our like side roads than our main roads but it's just a nice thing that helps it feel like home at the end of the day. Um, if you're American you can just skip this step or or use this to paint whatever strange markings your roads have and again you guys have seen me paint yellow before i'm doing a brown base and then mixing brown and yellow to make a gold color and then finally using yellow just by itself as a highlight um, the main trick here is if you've got any bits of sand or sawdust or debris or whatever on your road tile that really stands out just paint around it rather than trying to paint over it and having the line go up and down, you do see litter on the roads at the end of the day. You do see rubbish and like tin cans and bits of tyres and hubcaps that have come off and all sorts. So, you know, don't feel like, oh, these have to be perfect unbroken lines. It's the apocalypse. Don't worry about it. And here comes the best bit. Taking off, taking off the masking tape. Ah, it's, it's incredibly satisfying. And considering how quick it can be to paint these tiles, yeah, this, this is by far the best bit, <laughs> the most satisfying part. It's just, it's nice to see the, the tape do its job and do it well. But there you go, so that is the first of two tiles that I'll be painting up. Now, as I've said, I've ran out of black black paint, white paint, and black spray paint, so that you, you know there's going to be a Patreon plug because I'm running out of resources, but um, don't don't sweat it. This isn't going to be one of those channels where it's every five seconds, so just relax. So uh, painting the white middle of the road dividers, again, different countries will have different standards for what they look like on their roads. 
I'm just roughly going by memory. I mean, if it's readable at a distance that it's a road, then it's fine. That's all it has to do. And here we are with the finished road tiles. As I said, I've only done the two. Um, I don't feel like you guys need to see me do all the curved ones and all that. Um, because it's just the same. It's the same painting technique. It's the same basing technique. But the great thing is, now that we've built up a few different terrain projects on this channel, you should start to see your bit of the wasteland look a bit more detailed and a bit more lively. Because that's the nice thing about roads. They really help put all of this into perspective. So an ice cream truck looks bigger or smaller depending on what your roads look like and its surroundings. Whereas if you just have these different sized cars and things next to each other, sometimes it can feel a bit just a bit weird, like you're not quite sure how big something is or how small something is. And it is so nice and easy to create little sort of diorama setups having these different elements. So I'll admit I had a bit of fun. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a nice easy project while you're shut inside. So thank you all for watching Wasteland and I will see you all in the next episode. But just before we go, let's do another shout out to our sponsors. So, thank you to Camsel Designs and Mad Car Green Miniatures for sponsoring this channel. If you use the code JH Miniatures while checking out, you too can get 10% off your next order. And as always, check out the Gasland UK Facebook page and check out V2A, the sound of the apocalypse. Their podcast is going very strong and dangerously soon. You should be seeing yours truly on there. So if you have not been watching the emergency podcast yet, you should check that out. And one final plug. Yes, I have a Patreon account now, so by all means check that out if you want to help me keep these videos going. There will be car giveaways in the near future, but sadly they are on hold until this corona fiasco is over. So I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.